So starting the test drive in this Tucson SEO convenience, I've driven several Tucsons with the 2.5 liter, made it with that eight speed. And again, it gets the job done quite efficiently. Not as fun to drive as a turbocharged engine, but again, if you want something that's just simple, it kind of reminds me of the Camry because the Camry has that 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder as well as that eight speed automatic. And it just makes for a very simple powertrain. But again, just like how Toyota's is set up, it's a naturally aspirated four, but it does have enough power to get you through the day. Wouldn't race anybody in it, but again, it can pretty much keep up with traffic. And if you have to bust a move every so often, you can do that too. Now you only have the normal sport and the smart modes with this Tucson, which I like because the eco mode really would be your normal mode. And I like that you don't have something that's limiting you the entire time because it's just probably not good for the car. And on the highway, you're still getting good enough fuel economy where you shouldn't need to have an eco mode anyway. And the sport mode in this tends to be well, I'll show you. It over exaggerates a little bit, but at the same time, it's pretty, pretty great. Again, a naturally aspirated four cylinder. So for what that is, it's pretty remarkable, honestly. But we'll test it to its full potential getting on the interstate here. And I'm not gonna give it a full pull, but I'm gonna give it some throttle here. So again, definitely not a slouch, especially going downhill, merging onto the interstate. Let's put in a smart mode, turn on everything, test out the cruise here. So there I have the lane centering on as well as the adaptive cruise. Pretty solid system. Of course, it's gonna ask you to keep your hands on the wheel every so often, but pretty good again for what it is. And the ride was actually pretty nice too. Most of the Hyundais that I've driven, the rides are very good not super bouncy and the steering is also not super loose and for how much they cost they just i think that's what makes them such good buys right now because i haven't really driven a terrible hyundai knock on wood so coming off the auto stop i like that the cabin stayed relatively cool even as the engine was cut off and then letting my foot off the brake i was able to accelerate with no problem and when you have the automatic brake hold on you will have to actually touch the gas pedal to get the auto stop to come off so that takes a little bit longer but if you're not trying to hit it out of a stoplight you shouldn't have any issues with that but in terms of competition first thing that comes to mind is always the rav4 I like the Tucson better than the RAV4 just because of the looks, what you get for the money in my opinion, and then also just how it drives. I feel like the drive modes and with everything else considered, the Tucson feels better behind the wheel. And then also the Chevy Equinox is a competitor. Several other small UVs including the Ford Escape, but I feel like every small SUV out right now has its own kind of, I guess, market share, what makes it different, what helps it stand out. And with a Tucson, to me, I think it's the price point, the packages, and the looks for me. I feel like it's one of the better looking SUVs out, even though pretty much every other 
competitor has had a refresh more recently than the Tucson. But still a great SUV for the money in my opinion. And this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2023 Hyundai Tucson SEL with the convenience package.